Hi! Welcome to this part of my review featuring the Wicked Ones role-playing game. If you haven't seen the other parts of my review, please check out the playlist in the description below. The Wicked Ones role-playing game is a game where the player characters are the villains, the dungeon dwellers, the orcs, the zombies, the mind flayers, and we'll talk about those specifically in a future part of this review. They are not called mind flayers, but they are pretty much that. This time we are going to talk about the Game Master section. As the Game Master, you are the one that ties the game together. Within the story, your job is to represent the world and the non-player characters that inhabit it. You run a simulation of what happens as the player characters wreak havoc in the sandbox, determine how the world responds to them, and present them with interesting and fun challenges to overcome. Outside of the story, a lot of the responsibility for keeping gameplay flowing and preparing for the game between sessions will fall on you. However, the advantage of the Wicked Ones role-playing game is that sharing as much of this responsibility as you can with everyone at the table is best. You are all co-authors of the game, after all. However, group activities tend to need someone to act as a leader to keep things moving, and more often than not, that will be your job. So you have all of the information needed in this section to run a masterful campaign. You have details on how to represent the world, how to handle the sandbox, how to let things flow naturally, striving to change the dynamic of a situation when handing out consequences, making subsequent roles more interesting than the last, how to give out consequences that make sense, how you shouldn't take away easy wins just because the players are rolling well or had a great plan. You should reward that. There are also details on how to keep the dungeon in focus, how to make the game about building a dungeon, pushing for scenes within it, setting faction goals that matter for the dungeon, and how not to fall too much in love with the sandbox. The events within the sandbox should have an effect upon the dungeon. You also have information on how to give players interesting choices, keeping dark impulses in mind, always being on the lookout for temptation, giving players space to make choices, falling back on player creativity as well. There are also details on how to make the world dangerous, making sure dire actually means dire, announcing big consequences before the roll, making sure the player characters know that everyone hates monsters. The game master should make adventurers smart and terrifying to challenge the player characters. You also have information on how to telegraph danger before it hits, to give the player characters an opportunity to do their research, scouting to see what is going on. There are also details on how to inflict consequences to create immediate action, standing in the player character's way, choosing blowback and calamity wisely. And there are details on how to keep the information flowing, conveying lots of details, giving seemingly minor details to make scenes come to life, keeping the world moving giving non-player characters a feature or two that makes them memorable. And because of the style of the Wicked Ones role-playing game, you should give the player characters narrative control when it is appropriate, and be curious about their characters, what are their intentions, what are their goals. You should also describe the shifting narrative after every role. The outcomes of the player characters' actions are going to be pushing the story forward. There's also information on how to be a good director of the action keeping the game moving, that is, shifting the focus or the camera between the different non-player characters and player characters as needed, but the player characters are going to be the stars. You should also bring quieter players into focus if possible. You should zoom in on what's interesting and zoom out on what's not. You should ask for details about player characters' actions, and don't steal a player's thunder, of course. And don't be afraid to introduce some power struggles. After all, this is a game about villains. There's also information on using dungeon invasions effectively, timing the invasion, considering how long the invasion will take, using invasions to provide an existential threat, mixing up the goal of invasions as well. An invasion is the player character's chance to see all of the stuff they've been building in motion. You should also invade when it makes sense or seems fun. There are also details on how to be a fair arbiter of the rules. You should map the fiction back to the rules, creating a fiction-first atmosphere, trusting your gut, encouraging discussion about rulings, making up rules on the fly if necessary, and looking up specific rules later. If you think that is going to interrupt the flow of the game, that is, 
And it's also a generally good idea to get a sense of the probabilities of dice rolls so you know how often things are likely to happen. You also have details on how to start a campaign with session zero, choosing a sandbox, choosing a dungeon theme, choosing callings. There are also details on how to handle a good session one, creating your dungeon, setting up factions, having the players describe their characters, all sorts of things related to that push, that initial launch of the campaign. It's all perfectly organized in a step-by-step -step manner. So if you had any doubts or questions as to how to run the game, go immediately to this section and you will understand the general flow and the structure. You also have information on how to handle things between sessions, encouraging players to plan out ahead, answering questions that they may have, going over the rules in order to make sure that important rules related information is not forgotten when you are running the game. We also have a subsection detailing everything about the main antagonists of the game, the adventurers, explaining class and tier, how to use them, their passive abilities and moves, their traits and motivations, hirelings, and you also have details on the best practices. Adventurers are meant to represent a very real challenge for the player characters. They are to be feared even though the player characters are the monsters. So timing is important when it comes to introducing adventurers. You need to play them smart, exploiting the weaknesses of the player characters, getting the challenge just right, and sometimes the adventurers will run away. Not every battle is going to be a battle to the death. So you have many different non-player character adventurers here. You have adventurers such as the Amazon, the Aristocrat, the Barbarian, the Buccaneer, the Chaos Mage, the Defender, the Death Knight, the Eldritch Warrior, just to name a few. There's also information on how to present dangerous foes. Enemies are modeled like any other challenge in the Wicked Ones role-playing game. Strong enemies are a mix of clocks, circumstances towards position and effect, and inflicted consequences. So you are offered a baseline to modify the different characteristics of the enemies, making the attack stronger, boosting the defense unique abilities, making them more tenacious. And at the end of the section, you have an example of gameplay, a scenario called One Last Full Moon. The full moon is out and the town is in chaos. An angry mob of farm folk has stormed the major's estate, banging on the gates. The dire wolf paces relentlessly in its cage in the town square. The player characters are watching from a hill outside of town. The assault begins. The game master speaks. Ulrat, what's the plan again? I wanna make sure that I get this engagement roll, right? Then Ulrat, the orc brute, speaks. The minions push this big tree on wheels. I mean, battering ram down the hill. I ride it straight towards the Major's gate just before it hits. I toss the firebombs over the top at the archers and bail off. Everyone else will be running in behind me. The Game Master speaks. That's just crazy enough to work. The Major's expecting some trouble, but I think the angry mob is giving you cover. Should be three dice, but let's go with two dice because of that short fused firebomb you are using. The Game Master rolls three dice of engagement and gets a failure. The Game Master speaks. Yeah, this is gonna be a mess. Your minions start pushing you down the hill and you're just flying. You get the firebombs ready and say to yourself, okay, on three, one, two, three, boom. That short fused one goes off too early and the ram turns into a rolling ball of flame that slams into the gate, which somehow doesn't break. You start off bloodied with archers up above and angry farm folk all around. Ulrod speaks. I'll resist that damage with smash? Nah, that doesn't really make sense. Ah, I got it. I'll scan to notice the short fuse and jump off earlier. I just took rawhide too. So that gives me plus one die. Ulrod rolls two dice of scan and gets a success. Ulrod speaks. Nice! And no stress either because of Rawhide. As I count to two, I remember Slam's voice in my head. My eyes get real big, and in like slow motion, I yell, Oh shit! Dropping the firebomb and rolling off the ram. 
Slam the Slicic Shadow speaks. From way back behind, I yell, I try to tell ya. Then I duck behind some houses and skulk to the mayor's estate to sleep over the wall. The Game Master speaks. Everyone is pretty distracted, so it's strong as an effect. A mixed or a success here will get you over that wall unseen. Slim rolls three dice of Skulk and gets a failure. The Game Master speaks. As you are sneaking behind the houses, you hear the wolf pack howling as they enter town. They saw the fire. Then a different howl, a bit more distant, sends chills down your spine. It's the werewolf. Distracted, you don't notice the occult slayer standing in your path until it's too late. Slim speaks. I use my ear defense against detection from my cloak. He thinks he saw something, but the flourish hides my movements. And then I strike again with Skulk from the side. The Game Master speaks. I'm going to give you Wick as an effect here, because his passive is a sixth sense against danger. He feels it coming, his crossbow readied. Slam speaks. Guess I'll have to go hard then. I don't even try to skirt around him. I just leap from the shadows straight to do the path of the crossbow. I get plus one die from my bounce ability too. The Game Master speaks. Cool. Normal effect, but it's dire now. Slam rolls four dice of Skulk and gets a success. Slam speaks. I jump out of the shadows, up and over the crossbow, and come down to wedge the knife into his collar. Yeah, he's going to make a defensive move here. The Game Master rolls four dice of defensive move and gets a success. The Game Master speaks. As you leap, he drops the crossbow and uses your momentum to throw you through a window. He loses sight of you again, and the crossbow is on the ground, but he avoids getting hit. Let's cut away there for a bit. Crag, you hear the howling. What are you up to? Crag, the cobalt shaman, speaks. After Slem disappears, I beeline for that cage to let the dire wolf out. The game master speaks. As you enter the town square, you see the archers up on the walls, about to fill Ulrod with arrows, but then the howling starts. The game master rolls one die of fortune, representing the wolves, and gets a mixed result. The Game Master speaks. The wolves dash into town and straight at the angry mob. The archers let loose arrows, taking down some wolves. All hell is breaking loose. And this concludes this part of the review. This is truly one of the best Game Master sections that I have seen. And especially when you consider the nature of the Wicked Ones as a cooperative storytelling experience. There are plenty of mechanical details that will give shape to the story. This is a section that you can use to truly obtain mastery over the Wicked Ones role-playing game. Thank you for watching this part of the review. If you have any comments or questions, please let me know. And thank you so much to those of you that have been supporting the channel by sending drive through RPG gift certificates. If anyone else wants to further support the channel, the information on how to do that will be in the description below. Once again, thank you and see you later.